Hey everybody, what's going on? It's Mr. Hino with Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. And you're probably wondering, hey, Mr. Hino, you don't do Sunday videos. And you're right, I usually don't. Um, but a lot of you have been asking about your first Lego League project. And so I thought, you know what, looking at the time, there's not a lot of time left. So I decided to throw this Sunday video to you. So if you want to see about the project, stay with me. Hey everybody, Mr. Hino here. Hey, it's Cyber Monday coming up tomorrow, and I just wanted you to notice that I have merch down below. Check right here below this video. I have die cut stickers that are brand new and other things that would just help me out. Um, I know you guys just love to watch and you guys have been just with me all this time, and I'm just throwing down some merch just so, you know to see if you guys like it, and it would also help me out to, you know, bring these videos to you guys. So this is just a little plug for the merch. Check it down below this video again, just to see what I got. Thanks for watching. Let's go on with the video. So with the project, um, you know, if you're brand new to the competition, the project is basically gonna go along with the theme. So this year's theme is City Shaper. And they're asking you to come up with a solution to a problem in public spaces. And I have learned over the last weeks and months that it really needs to be with public places. I think one of our projects, I have three teams. One of the projects might not have been public enough. So I've just learned over the last few weeks that it really needs to be public and something that everybody can access. So first things first, you guys might be asking, well, when you're coming up with your project, how do you know, you know what your project should be? So here's Mr. Hino's number one tip for your project is usually first we'll give you an idea around the City Shaper board. So check out the board. So when you're looking around the board, you're usually trying to see what possible, you know, clues or hints first is giving you about your project. So, you know, those design and build cubes, that's for housing, you know, to make housing a little bit, um, you know, more condensed so it can, you know, you can house a lot of people in a small amount of area. Um, you know, there's the lady in the wheelchair. So they're thinking about helping out the, you know, disabled. Um, there's also, you know, the wildlife. So you're, you're given some clues if you just take a look around the board. Now, tip number two, when you're thinking about your project, you're trying to, you know, when you're doing a Google search, you're trying to make your search as specific as you can because, you know, if you just type in toys and you're looking for, you know, a teddy bear, you're gonna get so many things. And so the nar more narrow you do your project, the better. So instead of thinking about your project, let's say, you know, I, I wanna help, you know, people that live in New York, that's just too general. You're going to have to start to narrow your, your population down to who are you really trying to help. So instead of trying to help, you know, the world's population, you're going to, tr you're going to want to trim that down to help out a specific group. So for instance, you might take uh, the population and narrow it down to, I want to help out the elderly. I want to help out the disabled. I want to help out you know, people that live in a high rise building. So what you want to do is your targets here and you want to keep shrinking your target. So you get more of a focus rather than, you know, you have this giant population you're trying to help. And usually that doesn't work well with a project because it's just too broad. And, you know, your solution is not as specific or focused enough. So my tip number two is see if you can shrink down the population of who you're trying to help as little as you can. Tip number three is always, always, and I'm gonna leave you the link, always check your rubric for the project to make sure you're covering everything. You don't wanna go to your qualifier, you don't wanna go to your, you know, your state regionals or your championships and realize, oh shoot, we missed something. So definitely look at the rubric 
If it's your first time, look over it. If your second time, definitely look over and see where your team got scored low and try to bring that score higher. That, you know, the, the judges gave you a huge clue on how your team can get better. So, you know, if your team did not provide enough, you know, professional advice or feedback, get some more. If your team did not, you know, collectively as a group contribute enough, you know, go back and say, hey, everybody needs to contribute to, you know, the presentation. So it's just one of those things where you need to look at the rubric and make sure you know what the judges are looking for in your project. And lastly, number four with your project, you always want to make sure that each member of the team has their specific roles within that presentation. So I'm, I mean, I'm talking about the entire package of the presentation from you know, what your team does to lay out, you know, whatever it's a song, a skit, whatever it might be, everybody has their role. But when you go to your presentation for the actual solution, make sure everybody knows what their role is. Uh, Jimmy, you have the problem and you have the question. Mary, you're gonna have the solution. Um, and everybody knows their niche so that when it's their turn, they're just ready to contribute to their, you know, whatever their part is for their projects so that everybody's firing, everybody's ready, everybody's prepared instead of, you know, who, who has this one? I don't know. I thought you had this. So as you're getting ready to go to your qualifier to your championships, just again, make sure everybody knows their role, make sure everybody's an expert. And what I usually do is get my whole team together and I have each expert explain to the team again what it is about you know the project that they have so they're actually educating everybody else on their part so it's one of those you know divide and conquer things again where you take every team member educate everybody else so that you know never, not everybody else has to do the entire thing but it's like oh jimmy thanks for letting me know about that because I, I didn't know that about our project and then you know Mary can tell her part, so everybody's educated, but not everybody had to do this, the same amount of research. You know, everybody does their share, comes together, so now it's a team effort. So hopefully as you guys are putting your project together, those are the things you're looking at. And here's Mr. Hino's last tip. I usually have my students or my team, I, I usually have them pick a color, um, a star, or some type of sticker or anything, on the presentation board. So let's say, John, you're blue. I'll put a sticker um, on the board where John goes, oh, it's blue. I know that's my part. So if your team is having a hard time just knowing what, you know, what part of the presentation is theirs, I usually put colored stickers on my board so that way everybody knows their color. So when we're going through the presentation board, if somebody forgets, they can see the color and know it's it's their turn to present. So hopefully, you know, I didn't give you super specific, um, you know, advice or tips. I hope I hope it was at least helpful to get some of you rolling on your project. Um, hopefully, for some of you, it wasn't too late. But hopefully, as you move forward with your team, these you know tips will help your project become as good as your robot game and core values. So, okay, guys. I hope that was helpful for you. Good luck, and I hope you're still having fun with City Shaper. I am Mr. Hino from Mr. Hino's Lego Robotics. I'm out.